Welcome to the four pillars of army design. If you're trying to design an army for Warhammer 40,000 and you want to make sure that it is good, effective, it can still be fluffy, but you're not going to get destroyed by your opponents, especially if they've stolen an army list off the internet and it appears to be wrecking you, then this is something you're going to want to pay attention for because we're going to talk about how to create a balanced army that can be effective no matter who you're competing against. Now, the four pillars of army design breaks down into four equal components, and if you want to have a balanced army, you're going to need all four. James, what are the four pillars of army design? For the four pillars of army design, we have alpha strike, yes. durability, yes. probability, mm -hmm. and range. These are the four factors that you need to make your army good. Now, I'm going to give you a brief summary of what each one of these things are. I'm going to explain to you why you need them, and then over the next few videos, we're going to break down in depth some examples, some strategies, um, and, and real look into a deep dive into what these things are. So first of all, Alpha Strike is how hard you can hit your opponent in your first turn. Now, Warhammer 40,000, it's often been said that you win on the first turn of the game. That's not necessarily true. Um, I've definitely seen armies that are very effective at taking the second turn, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more with a very well-balanced army. But if you, if you do have a solid, strong Alpha Strike, and your opponent is not prepared to take that on the nose, then yes, they are absolutely going to lose. But if you get the first turn, you want to be able to capitalize on it, right? You really want to be able to hit that alpha strike hard so your alpha strike is how hard you hit your opponent now what fascinates me is how many people get the alpha strike wrong so a good example of a bad alpha strike would be vanguard veterans so these are space marine veterans with jump packs with storm shields and thunder hammers that are set up uh, in the sky to, to attack via uh, teleportation or to drop in on the second turn and the reason for that is because they're not on the board on the first turn. And as stupid as this sounds, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people build an army with a ton of vanguard vets all in the sky, and then on first turn, everything on the board gets wrecked. Yeah. Then they come down on turn two, and they're not really that effective, and the player just keeps saying, yeah, but they're so strong, they're so strong, yeah. they're so strong. I'm like, yeah, but they're not on the board. You, you gotta be on the board on turn one for your alpha strike. So the very first thing I do is whenever I'm designing an army, I will make sure that a third of my army is designed for the alpha strike. So one third, is purely built around hitting my opponent hard, and I wanna be able to remove all the key units off their army on the first turn if I can. So I wanna do enough damage that my opponent is gonna really struggle to fight back. And that's the key. Now, I'm not gonna be able to wipe off their whole army, and we'll talk about that later on, but you can often make it so somebody can't hit you back hard enough. A good example of this was back when I used to play in fifth edition, and in fifth edition, I had an army that was all in vehicles. And what I would do is at the first turn of the game, I would kill all my opponent's anti-vehicle guns. That was my alpha strike. I didn't worry about killing anything else. I just wanted to kill the anti-vehicles because I knew if I could remove everything on the board that could kill a vehicle, my army was pretty much untouchable. And so that's a good example of a very targeted and calculated alpha strike. So your alpha strike will change depending on which army you pick, but you've got to have an alpha strike. Next up, you gotta have durability. James, what is durability? So durability is being prepared for that alpha strike. When you can have your army set up to where that um, alpha strike coming from your opponent is not gonna phase it, or maybe it does a little bit of damage, but you can still come back with a hard counter. Yeah, so your durability is how well you can receive your opponent's alpha strike. Most of my armies can win, even if I go second, because of durability. In fact, my current Death Guard army is designed to be very brutal if it goes second. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah James, James knows exactly how it works. And we'll talk about durability and why that's so powerful. But you need to be able to recover against your opponent's alpha strike and be protected from it. And so when we do the durability training, we're going to talk about all the ways to make sure that no matter how hard your opponent hits on turn one, you are going to give them a really nasty counter punch. Okay, so after durability, we have probability. Now, I think this is the thing that throws people off the most. People talk about math hammer, which is like calculating the mathematics of how likely something is to happen. There are people that love math hammer. There are people that hate math hammer. The reality is it is a game of chance and statistics. You do need to be able to math hammer. All the best players can math hammer in their heads. You don't have to be amazing at math, but you do want to understand it you know, a little bit. And probability is, what is the mathematical probability of something happening? So again, I can't tell you how many times I've seen somebody design an army, and they're like, oh, this squad's amazing. One in three times, it will destroy my opponent. I'm like, great, as long as you're happy losing two in three games. Yeah. Another big one is they'll see, you know, a big shiny gun on the stat line, and they're like, this is going to kill everything. Yeah. And 
and then it fires and does yeah. absolutely nothing. Yeah. yeah, because you know, like um, a, a good example is actually I was playing with a Reaver Titan the other day, mm -hmm. and the Reaver Titan in Ninth Edition has a ballistic skill of three up. That means one in three shots miss. That's pretty rough. Yeah. And you know, when you're picking the gun, if the gun only fires a couple of times, one in three misses is is pretty brutal, mm -hmm. right? So you really have to factor that in when you're designing your armies and thinking about how can we maximize the probability. What is the chance that it will do that which I wish it to do? Um, and so probability is a huge factor. And in fact, anytime you can increase the probability of something happening, especially if that will increase it for multiple units, like with an aura effect, you're really getting more bang for your buck. So I'll give you an example of this. Um, think about how many points you pay for a model, right? So if I'm gonna pay, um, I don't know, 225 points for a squad of five eradicators, if those eradicators um, suddenly get plus one to hit and plus one to wound, I'm getting a bargain because yeah. they were designed at a points cost of 225, assuming they have a ballistic skill of three or higher and a strength of eight. If I'm giving them plus one to hit and plus one to wound, they should cost a lot more than 225 points. So effectively, just by adding a captain and a lieutenant next to those guys, letting them reroll ones, um, I have boosted their effectiveness, which is essentially uh, decreasing their points cost because they're cheaper than they should be. If I've got three squads of eradicators around those same captain and lieutenant, then I'm maximizing the points cost across all of them and you know my probability goes up. So I hope that makes sense, but it's basically why aura buffs are so important in this game. It's why they had to add the core keyword to ninth edition um, because to stop people abusing things like that, but yeah. you can still abuse it. You just got to sure. do it right. Yeah, so, sure. so that's a key factor. Um, and then lastly, we have range. There are three different ranges in the game. Three key, clear things. James, you want to give them the three ranges? Of course. So for our three ranges, we have long range, uh, medium range, and assault range or close combat range. Your army has to be effective against all three ranges. It's no good to, to design a close combat army that spends turn one and turn two walking towards the opponent. Because turn one is the, the long range game, and if you can't get into close combat on turn one, your close combat army is gonna be reduced by a number of models. If you still can't get into contact on the uh, during the middle range or the second turn of the game, or the tactical range, you could call it, um, then by the time you get into close combat, there's nothing left, you're gonna lose the game. So you have to be effective at all three ranges. You can have a close combat army, but you need to be effective on turn one. A classic example of a bad mistake for this would be a Tyranid army that relies on gene stealers to get into close combat and, uh, and maybe you know, a whole bunch of Hormagaunts. In that situation, your gene stealers you know, can maybe uh, teleport in or dig in, but they don't arrive until turn two. You know, maybe they're coming in with, um, what's the name of that model that comes underground? The Trigon. Uh, yeah. The Trigon will bring them underground, but they turn up on turn two, and the Hormagaunts probably won't reach on turn one, so now we have a situation where we're just not getting in close combat until turn two or three, and you're just losing all your models. So that doesn't really work. You need to be effective at turn one. Having a bunch of Hive Guard on turn one that have a lot of long range shots, um, and maybe some Hive Tyrants that move across the battlefield and blast with some psychic powers, gives you that initial turn that hits really hard, your Alpha Strike, which is the effective long range, and then you can start coming in on the other turns at medium range and close range. So. You need to be effective against all three ranges. These are the four pillars. If you design an army where a third of your army is designed to alpha strike at least, and it can hit hard enough to cripple enough of your opponent's army, it's gonna be difficult for them to fight back. Two, you have durability. If your opponent goes first, it will not stop you fulfilling or performing whatever core tactic you wanna do. Three, the probability of each of these things happening that we just spoke about is incredibly high and leans in your favor. Yep. And four, you are effective at long range, medium range, and close combat range. Your army is balanced. It gets a thumbs up and you will be able to play no matter who you play against. This is why my armies can hold, uh, can hold up against um, you know, tournament players. I can hold up against people I've never played before. You can bring a horde army against my army or you can bring a heavily psychic army against my army. It makes no difference. Yeah. I am prepared for anything. And that is how you need to be. Even my armies that don't have psychers, I'll make sure I've got the Night the Witch in there to make sure that I've got probability against somebody else's psychic powers, okay? so. These are the four pillars, this is what you need. And so make sure you get your pen and paper ready as we get ready for the next training where we're gonna talk about the Alpha Strike.